Hello, this is Dr. Tim Perkins from the University of Vermont Proctor Maple Research Center talking today about why leader check valve spouts are a better option than other sanitation approaches. Well, what types of factors have an effect on sap yield? There are several um, and we easily recognize what they are. First of all is weather, which has an obvious influence. We want a lot of freeze thaw periods during the actual sugaring season. Without weather that is too overly hot or too overly cold, it needs to be in that Goldilocks range to get good sap flows. We need trees that are healthy, trees that are large, uh, tr canopy trees that will produce good sugar and decent amounts of sap. Tapping practices also have an influence on yield in terms of how deep do we tap trees, whether or not uh, we're using small spouts or large spouts, how deeply we're seeding those spouts, and many, many other different uh, effects on, on yield due to tapping practices. Vacuum level has an obvious influence. The higher we go in vacuum, the higher the yield. We get about 5% more sap for each one inch of vacuum that we pull. And lastly, sanitation. Why is sanitation important? It's because trees are living and as we put a wound in the tree, the trees respond to that wound and in particular to microbes within the wound by trying to close off the wound to prevent infection. And sanitation practices, we're trying to keep the wound as clean as possible so that the trees have a lower level of response during the season. So there have been a number of research studies on trying to use new spouts each year or use check valve spouts or replacing drops periodically. Uh, these have been done primarily over the last 12 years uh, at a variety of different institutions. The University of Vermont, uh, myself, I've done a number of studies between 2009 and 2020. Steve Childs at the Cornell Arnott Forest uh, has done uh, also a large number of studies. There's been one study at Center Acer uh, where they looked at comparing spouts versus new spouts versus check valve spouts. And then at Future Generations University, uh, Dr. Mike Recklin has done some research looking at check valve spouts. And we're going to look at all of these studies together just as a, a broad overview of what the results have been. Um, why those particular studies and not talk about producers and, and what they've found? Well, in general, we're going to talk about the research studies because these were conducted with control and replication. And in other words, they were done scientifically. So we know that when they compared things, they were comparing apples to apples instead of apples to pineapples. We, we know that um, they were done, each individual study when they were comparing things was done in a single year comparing two different things, one of them a control and one something else. They may have done uh, three different things or four different things in one year, but they always had control. And they also had replication in that we had a number of different observations where we could get averages from them. And so we know that one result wasn't simply due to uh, a main line freezing up or having a big leak or something. So with the replication, we can get good averages. We also uh, are going to look at studies that are primarily done on 5 16 inch tubing. One of these studies was done on 3 16 all the rest were done on 5 16 All of these were conducted on vacuum um, and the level may vary from study to study, but in any one comparison, the actual level uh, was the same. But from group to group or year to year, the, the level may vary somewhat, and that could affect the results somewhat. We're going to look at results that include both mechanical and electrical releasers. But uh, one thing that's important is that all of this research was done in a variety of different ways. So some studies may have been done on individual trees on chambers. Others were done on groups of trees that were all going into one chamber or a group of trees that were on a main line. So uh, all of these involve 
good num numbers in terms of uh, reasonably high numbers in replication of, of those treatments. All of the studies involve comparisons with old tubing. And we say old tubing, it's tubing that have been used for maple purposes. The ages are going to vary though from year to year. But again, uh, in, in any one year, in any one group that was doing a study, they were using tubing of a certain age for all of the different comparisons. And what we're looking at is how much additional sap was gained above that of san unsanitized systems. So systems that had not been cleaned other than perhaps with air and water, which we know is not an effective way to sanitize systems. And so we're using as a baseline those unclean, unsanitized systems and how much more sap do we get if we use some type of sanitation strategy. And when we look at sanitation, there are, if particularly the replacement strategies, there are three major ways that we can go about improving sanitation. And so when we change spouts each year, we can, ex we can expect that we're gonna get an increase in sap yield due to simply having the new spout in contact with a tree, so fewer microbes right in that immediate area around the tap hole. So that is a spout effect. There's also the check valve effect. That's the change in sap yield due to both effects of the check valve itself preventing backflow and the fact that we have a new spout with new plastic there uh, in the tap hole. And then we have the new drop effect, which is a combined effect of both the new spout as well as a new drop line and a new T. So we're having clean material uh, both right near the tap hole, but also some distance away that's really keeping that tap hole as clean as possible, preventing uh, backflow from affecting the tap hole to a, to a more substantial degree. So we're going to look at those three different things, spout effect, the check valve effect, and the new drop effect. And both the check valve and the new drop incorporate the spout effect into it, but we can actually uh, see where the different effects are coming from. Lots of different factors also play a role in how effective the sanitation efforts are each year. So uh, the season, the type of weather we have, the duration of any thaw events, how old the tubing is, what type of releaser is being used, and pump management, whether the pump is being shut on and off or being left to run the entire season. So this is a graph showing the um, results of all the different studies. So we have spout here, the check valve, which is both a check valve and the spout effect, and then the spout and drop replacement effect over on the right. And we're looking at sap yield improvement uh, as a percentage beyond that of unclean systems. So you can see the spouts tend to be a fairly modest effect. When we have a check valve spout there, it is a slightly higher effect and the spout and drop uh, replacement is even higher. So on average, the spout yields about a 31% increase in sap yield above that of unclean systems check valve about 63% and the spout and drop about 72%. Now you see some little numbers here occasionally. Well, this, this number one um, means that there in that particular study, this, this one happens to be by center acer, there wasn't any true replication. Um, this study was done in one year and uh, this effect here in particular uh, is, is a little questionable because the yield was very, very low, uh, only about seven gallons of sap per tap. Uh, and so we don't really know what was going on with that study other than their, their yields, even with uh, replacement spouts and with check valve spouts was just very, very low. 
uh, number one in this bar, this is a study that was done by Future Generations University and, and also didn't include any replication. The number two uh, is 2012. 2012, I think everybody recalls, is a year that we had very uh, hot weather in March uh, throughout most of the Maple region and sanitation uh, uh, impacts that particular year uh, weren't very large because it was just so hot that nothing that we that we could do could overcome that type of problem. So anywhere you see a two is where uh, it was 2012 season. And three indicates the one study that was done on uh, 3 16 tubing, but uh, no replication in 3 16 tubing, but it's still within the range that the other studies showed. So I, I'm showing here for you. Well, if we look at the average of all of those effects, again, we can see that the spout itself, simply replacing a spout, gives you about a 31% increase in sap yield. If, however, you use a check valve spout, a new check valve spout each year, you get about a 63% increase in yield. And these are averages over 12 seasons, over dozens of studies. So we're, we're fairly confident that these, um, that these numbers are good representations of what actually happens. Um, and if we instead change the drop line, then what we get on average is about a 72%. So about a 9% increase from check valves if we go to a new spout and drop. Now, uh, the one thing that's important to recognize though is that we don't replace drops generally every year. We replace them on some uh, replacement interval, typically about every three years, maybe every four years. And then you can also see I've indicated this dash line here. What that means is this much of the overall effect is being uh, is accounted for by the fact that we're simply putting a new spout in there. So the spout effect is within the check valve effect and it accounts for about uh, 30% uh, of the total 63%, so not quite half, and it accounts for about 30% of the total 72%, so maybe about 40% of the overall effect. But going back to the drop line replacement, the first year, 72%. As we uh, as that tubing ages, we see it it's going to drop down. So the second year, the drop line replacement is only going to produce about 61 percent. Third year, we're down to about 50 percent improvement uh, over an unclean system. So overall, over three years, if we're replacing drop lines on a three-year rotation with new spouts each year, we're going to end up with about a 61% improvement in yield. So essentially, over a three-year rotation time, you're getting the same type of benefit with a three-year drop line replacement interval as you are with a check valve spout. So, that isn't the the end of it. What we're really interested in is how much money you're putting in your pocket. So if we look at spouts and the spout effect, again, we go back to a 31.4% increase, and we can calculate that out using a few assumptions, and your numbers may be slightly different, but you're going to achieve about an 81 cent uh, additional profit per tap above unclean systems simply by replacing the spout. So, so it's well worth it to replace the spout each year. If instead you use a check valve spout, you're going to get a 63% on average, and you're going to get a net profit of $2.15 because your yields are considerably higher, um, even subtracting out the additional costs of the spout. The check valve spout is more expensive, uh, you're, but you're getting more sap out of it, and it isn't very hard to do. It doesn't take much labor. So the net profit above that of using a spout is about $1.34. If you use a drop line replacement with a new spout each year, you get on average about the same as you do with a check valve spout, about 60 to 63 percent, but your net profit per, per tap is a little lower. And this is because 
uh, that you have to pay for the drop line, you have to pay for the replacement T, and then there's the labor involved. You have to make the drops, get them out of the woods, get the old ones back out of the woods, uh, get the new drops into the woods, get the old drops back out of the woods. So your profit is only about $1.53 per tap over that three-year rotation, and your net profit per tap over simply replacing the spout alone is about 72 cents. So in general, your net profits using the check valve spouts are higher, and that's why I say at the very beginning that using check valve spouts are a better option for sanitation purposes. Well, in terms of other sanitizers, there are other ways to go about this, and I'll go through some of these uh, very, very quickly briefly. Isopropyl alcohol is one that's used extensively in Canada. Our research and that of others has shown that it produces about two-thirds of the benefit of a new drop. Uh, it is costly both in terms of materials and implementation because you have to go out in the woods to apply this. Uh, you have to drain it at a certain point. Uh, the material itself is fairly costly. It's also illegal to use throughout the U.S. because it is not allowed, uh, according to the EPA, uh, it is considered a pesticide and it is not registered for use in maple operations. Bleach is a very commonly used cleaner. Uh, it essentially matches the high sap yields of a new drop and spout if done properly with a long contact time. It does, however, require that you either rinse or allow the first sap to run on the ground. So you're losing some either in labor, your time to rinse, or you're losing by letting some sap run on the ground. It's fairly labor intensive, and worst of all, it tends to attract squirrels. Uh, we have not used bleach for decade over a decade at the Proctor Center and never had any squirrel problems in the last few years that we've been researching bleach more we find that squirrels have returned to those particular sections so we uh, are not using bleach any longer um, simply because having to deal with a squirrel problem is just too much of an issue Hydrogen peroxide, a lot of producers like to think that this uh, would work well. Turns out the effectiveness for sanitizing tubing is pretty low. It's also a fairly expensive type of cleaner compared to others. And what we found through the research um, and, and in some coordinated research with Cornell is that the net profits uh, when using hydrogen peroxide are very low, oftentimes negative, meaning you're actually losing money uh, by using hydrogen peroxide. And then lastly, zap back spouts, uh, these spouts that have an antimicrobial silver embedded in them. Again, they are reasonably effective in, in increasing sap yields. They provide about two thirds the benefit of a new drop, uh, but the net profit is lower because of the cost of the spout. Um, and they're also not allowed in organic certified maple operations. So to summarize, on average, we see the leader check valve spouts produce about double the sap yield improvement compared to new spouts alone on used maple tubing. They produce sap yields that match that of new drops in spouts on a three-year rotation period. They generate higher net profits than spout replacement or periodic drop replacement and they require less labor to implement than drop replacement or cleaning. They produce considerably less plastic waste than replacing drop lines. And check valves don't result in the introduction of chemicals into the woods or in your syrup or chemicals that maple producers have to handle. So overall, they provide a large number of benefits and the uh, net in terms of profit for maple producers tends to be the highest with check valve spouts. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. You can contact me via email at timothy.perkins at uvm.edu or contact your local leader evaporator company representative. Thank you.